with one of the biggest innovations that we've seen in the audio tech industry for quite some time, Ico are looking to completely revolutionize how we interact with our TWS. The big selling point of the Active Buds is the engine, marketed as the world's first smart control TWS. Their tiny charge case doesn't just hold and charge the earbuds, but it's running its own operating system, a flavor of Android Oreo, and it has a 1.8 inch AMOLED display. And this combined with a 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor has allowed Ico to release a product that gives you so much more functionality than your average set of TWS. They've included a bunch of different preloaded apps as well as their own app store. And when I say apps, I'm not just talking about your average media players. Ico have embraced AI with a language app that supports over 45 different languages and its own licensed flavor of ChatGPT. It supports Wi-Fi, but you can even pop in a 4G SIM card and it can potentially double up as a wireless hotspot. Today, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the merits of the Active Buds we're gonna deep dive into the case and some of the apps and see how they perform. And we're gonna look at the earbuds as well and judge their performance. You're gonna hear some active noise cancellation by normal samples, call quality tests in noisy real life environments, and we'll look at frequency response measurements of the buds themselves. But first, I wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who's helped the channel grow to 10,000 subscribers. I really wasn't expecting it to grow that big when I started two years ago. So a big thank you for that. And a reminder to give the videos a like if you find them useful or if you enjoy them. Only 1% of users tend to like videos on YouTube and I'm no exception. When you like the videos, it gives me a steer as to the kind of things that you're looking for in a review. It tells me what's working and what isn't. And you help the algorithm suggest my videos so I can spend more time on the products and less time promoting the brand on Reddit and Instagram and Twitter, etc. But anyway, back to the Active Buds. And from an unboxing experience, you're not bombarded with loads of accessories. Ico have unusually included a USB-C to C charge cable. It's quite short, but keep hold of it because I found the charge case could be a bit finicky with which cable it wanted to work with. You're also getting two sides of spare tips and a tool to open the SIM card slot. Operating the touchscreen case is very straightforward and very intuitive and it's been made even easier thanks to a recent firmware upgrade that negated the need for a long press on the app in order to open it. The case has a very large thumb sized tactile button on the right hand side. When the case is switched on, pressing this once will activate the main display. All you can do here really is toggle the ANC modes by swiping the bit that says ANC up or down. You can also see the date and how much charge is remaining in the buds and the case. A short swipe from the side brings up a quick menu where you can very quickly adjust the volume. You've also got fast access to the Ico Music app where you can adjust the EQ. Long swiping right from the main screen gets you into the main menu and you can use either the screen itself or this trackpad on the right hand side to move up and down. The quick settings menu is in my opinion more useful. Here's that button to change the default action from opening apps with a long press to a short press. The case has a speaker built into it and you can turn that off here as well. You can also launch updates for the operating system. It will auto update, but if you're impatient like me and you wanna grab those new features and functions, it's worth knowing where that button is. Ico are adding stuff all the time, and this is no less true in the App Store, which had bare shelves when I received the Active Buds. Now there's quite a few apps which have appeared in the different sections. There was no games on this device, but now you've got Ski Safari too. They've also included the meditation app Calm, there's a GPS app as well. And probably most interesting for me, they've added Audible support now. I've already tested it out and it works pretty well. For gaming though, I would probably stick to your phone because the moment you try and use your thumb, it covers practically the entire screen. The size of the screen can present some challenges when you're trying to log into apps as well. This is the one occasion where my pointy witch fingers are quite useful in using the tiny little Gboard on the device to input username, password, and then the MFA credentials. As far as streaming players go, you've got a choice of Spotify, Apple Music, or my choice, Tidal. The interface looks exactly the same as it does on the mobile app. Although again, because the areas of the screen that you need to touch are so small, pausing and progressing tracks can sometimes be a little bit difficult. 
and your streaming app doesn't have to be playing through the inbuilt speaker or through the active buds themselves you can pair with a bluetooth speaker and get it to play through that as well the big benefit of this is you can just leave a playlist playing and just listen to music is not going to get interrupted by the phone ringing you're not going to get message alerts either interrupting your tracks i know you can set these things up with your phone but some people like to separate the two things out and this definitely gives you the flexibility to do that <laughs> Ico also has its own music app which allows you to store offline music and adjust EQ settings as per your own personal preference. Selecting from one of an assortment of different user presets or by using the custom equalizer. This definitely needs a little bit of work. When you select one of the presets you don't really see what it's doing to the sound profile and in terms of the custom EQ to say that it's counterintuitive is an understatement. I also didn't feel at any point like the equalizer was improving the sound at all. But if all the apps that you've seen so far have been the supporting cast, then the main attraction is definitely their two AI based apps, ChatPal and Speakeasy. The active buds are essentially including a pro license to ChatGPT, although do bear in mind you can only use it on this device. If you're new to ChatGPT, where have you been? It has untold benefits, not least when you're bored. Can you please rewrite the story of Noah's Ark as a pirate? The interface is straightforward enough, although it isn't really clear whether your question has been properly submitted. Sometimes you have to wait around, you're not sure whether to press a button once or twice. It isn't massively responsive either. And when you're asking questions with long answers, this tiny screen isn't really the best medium for it. So you're better off with shorter, snappier questions, which for me really takes the joy out of using ChatGPT in the first place. If you wait around long enough, it will eventually narrate the text which it has provided as an answer. It's all a bit clunky, but I've no doubt they will improve the efficiency of this over time. The Speakeasy translation service though really does work well in this format. It will translate something like 45 different languages and it gives you a few different options to deliver its service, which make it pretty versatile and gives a little bit of an advantage over just using your phone. It can do simple translations where you talk in one language and it turns it to another. Minus piat akrit And it presents its results quickly and accurately before narrating it back in that language. Minus five is a negative number. Mama ni lubit gromker musica ilid lini pridlagenie. Has am Samstag Fußball gespielt? Nee, hat er da geregnet. Did you play football on Saturday? No, did it rain? Duo mode is pretty interesting as well in that it gives you a slightly different twist on being able to translate using the earbuds and or the case. So you could potentially have a situation where you speak in one language in the left earbud, hand the right earbud to the person that you want to speak to and it will translate what you've said into your target language and play it through that earbud for the other person. This is mind blown sort of stuff that would have been really handy when I was a single DJ in my 20s, traveling to lots of different countries, meeting girls who spoke different languages that I couldn't speak. However, as a 40 something year old YouTube reviewer, I think I'd probably be arrested if I tried any of that. And live mode is another potential godsend where it will translate as it hears it. Again, a very useful feature. With all of the apps, you will occasionally run into a menu or an option where you get a pop-up saying coming soon. I've seen a few reviews where they've criticize this saying why have they released a half-baked product or a product before it's ready but for me you're always going to have this when you're dealing with a product that's pushing the boundaries of innovation it's telling that ico have been super responsive rolling out fixes bug fixes and new features since the product was released personally i'd much rather see this you'll see it across the entire technology stack products that aren't quite ready and they require being out in the field really for users to properly test them before they gain maturity. It doesn't matter whether it's Ico, Apple or Google, all technology companies will release products before they're ready 
And just as long as they don't leave the products like that, personally, I'm fine with that. So what about the earbuds themselves? Well, they're short, stubby, stem-based earbuds that are a real faff to get out of the Active Buds case. They're very snug fitting and IPX4 rated, so you can use them in the gym without any problems. They have a little bit of a generic look to them, and whilst they're reasonably comfortable for short periods of time, for prolonged use they did start to ache my ears a little bit. They feature up to 48 dB active noise cancellation. I've included a sample here from a cafe so you can hear how effective they are in comparison to one of the leaders in that mid price category, the Edify Neo Buds Pro 2. Ambient on. Ambient sound. Ambient sound. So as you heard there, a pretty respectable performance when it comes to ANC. And transparency mode isn't bad either. There's a little bit of white noise over the top of your voice, but generally it's fairly natural, natural enough and you can hear close-up conversations pretty clearly. On the subject of conversations, this is how the mics sound when you're in a very quiet room. Now I'm gonna play you a couple of cool samples in different busy environments so we can hear how the mics perform on your voice calls when the scene is a bit more challenging. This is how the mic on active buds sound on a call when you're outdoors and maybe you're working, walking, working? maybe you're walking to school, to college, uh, the daily commute, something like that, and you need to make or take a call. And you've got a mixture of wind noise, you've got lots of different vehicles coming by. These are the kind of things that will complicate your call and really put your microphones to the test. And this is some of the testing that I go active buds for voice calls, see how they perform in a busy indoor scene. I'm in the usual coffee shop here in the UK, where you've got a mixture in the weekend, you've got a lot of people in here, a mixture of industry chatter. Conversation, the customers going around it. You've got the sound of the baristas making coffee. You've got music playing through the stereo system as well. So these are common sorts of frequency sounds that your voice calls will have to cancel. You have to deal with if you want to make your take a call. I go active bus. As you heard, the mic in a very quiet room performs okay. Picks up your voice without any problems. But as soon as you introduce any ambient noise into the scene. Those six mics don't do a great job of effectively removing those environmental sounds. Wind noise in particular is a problem for most earbuds, but it was a real Achilles heel for the active buds. And even in the indoor sample where you had lots of different sounds coming in the scene, it struggled to pick up your voice there too. So what about the audio and sound signature? Well, the active buds come with 10 mil silicon crystal diaphragm dynamic drivers and they support the AAC and SBC codecs. From a hardware perspective, they're already behind some of the competition who support dual drivers and high res codecs. And I think it's fair to say it shows in the audio performance, which certainly isn't stellar. Although to be fair to ICO, it has improved since their last firmware update. When we look at the frequency response measurement, it's kind of difficult to see what I go we're trying to do here. Bass is slightly elevated, and then you've got this weird peak around three to 500 hertz before the upper mid range practically falls off a cliff. As a result, the sound is really congested. There's not much definition to synths and strings and claps. And the vocals, as you would expect, female vocals in particular sound like they're being sung through a pillow. This inexplicable tuning reminded me of something that was searching through my squig. Eventually I found it was a Soundcore Space A40. Very similar problems with the tuning. 
Thankfully, it was remedied with the EQ and you can probably do the same thing with the active buds. I say probably because I couldn't really work out how to use the custom EQ, but playing through a few of the presets and the electronic preset does seem to give you a bit more of a classical V-shape sort of sound. Kick drums have a little bit more bite and a bit more oomph and vocals are clearer as well. I'm going to spend the next few weeks playing around with the sound, seeing if I can get it to my target EQ. I don't think it's an issue with the hardware, I think it's just a tuning issue. So it should be a formality getting them to sound good. And as always, I'll include my EQ settings in the head fire review. The link will be in the description. Battery life is fairly impressive as well. I go advertise seven and a half hours. My real life tests got me just under six and a half hours, but bear in mind, I was connected to the case playing around with the EQ whilst connected to my phone. And I also took a few different call samples and had active noise cancellation switched on. Even so, six and a half hours is very respectable. This extends to 30 hours with the case. Although bear in mind that's establishing that the case is fully charged. Obviously if you're using the case, then that's gonna erode battery as well. So that's something to be careful of. The case advertises 168 hours standby time. So your real life use time is probably gonna be around two days. Seemingly the price you have to pay when you want to have anything that's smart. So you've heard and seen all the good stuff with the active buds. What about the stuff that isn't quite so good? Well, the charge time seems quite long, especially when you're charging the case as well. There's no quick charge feature. There's no in-ear detection sensors and there's no mappable controls. And the controls can be a real problem because you've got no volume control on the earbuds. So when they're not connected to the case and you don't have the control that way, you're stuck. You have to use the volume button on your phone. And this is something that's a problem on budget TWS alone and a relatively expensive set in the active buds. Perhaps this is something that ICO can add at a later date as it's a little bit disappointing to not see that here. It's only a small thing, but it would have been nice to have seen IPX5 water resistance rating rather than the basic IPX4. Whilst the interface is generally pretty good, I feel like they could have locked down more things. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can go in and change and potentially break as well. There's quite a few dead ends still where you select something and you get the coming soon icon. As I mentioned earlier, these are things that you come to expect with a relatively new product that sometimes still feels like it's in beta. Ico have at least been super proactive and transparent about updates with a new release coming every two to three weeks. And it was great to see they've set up a forum accessible via their website where they announce new releases and include change logs. That kind of transparency goes a long way. The call quality and the default tuning definitely could have been better out of the box, although neither are necessarily deal breakers. Then there's a philosophical question of whether this is a device we actually need. It's an additional device doing a lot of things that your phone can already do. Some of you will feel it's solving a problem that doesn't exist, but there'll be others out there, especially those who've got this far into the review, who will see it as a new piece of technology that is pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits of innovation. And I can definitely understand both points of view. At 310 pound or 320 US dollars, the active buds aren't cheap. You need to remember that you're investing in ICO as an organization as much as a product. And I think they've done enough so far to suggest that they're not gonna leave this product alone. It will keep getting better and better. What do you think of the ICO active buds? Do leave your comments in the comments section below. Smash a like if you found it useful, interesting, both or neither. For now, it's Reagan Cypher signing off.